You may have noticed when you first log in to OpenSense that it says that the certificate is not valid. Do you want to continue? A lot of self-hosted web applications, you've probably seen this warning before because by default, they usually generate a self-signed certificate. And so a warning is given because it's easy for a malicious actor to spoof a self-signed certificate because there's no uh, authority uh, signing off on the certificate to say it's a valid certificate. So in OpenSense, you can actually create your own certificates using Let's Encrypt by using the Acme plugin. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the Acme plugin so that you can set up your own Let's Encrypt certificate. The great thing about this process is you don't have to expose your OpenSense web interface to the internet to be able to get a certificate because I'm gonna show you using the DNS challenge, which is my favorite authentication method for Let's Encrypt because you can use it for any internal service on your network and without needing to open up access to the internet to validate your certificates. So it's just really great, I think, for home labs and for home networks if you want to get rid of those warning messages and actually have a valid real certificate. So that, that's actually our goal in this video today. Before getting started with setting up the Acme plugin in OpenSense, you will need to set up an API key with your uh, domain name registrar. I'm using Cloudflare as an example because that's what I currently use and I know a lot of people use Cloudflare as well and it's just easiest for me to do an example for a service I already have but there's other domain providers that you can use. So the first thing we're going to do is open up Cloudflare and to minimize having to blur out a bunch of stuff I already have it signed in to my account and if you go to this upper right hand corner you'll be able to click on your profile and then you can click on this api tokens section over on the side here and then you'll see some api tokens that you already have created by default you should have a global uh, api key for example i already have an edit zone dns key in here this is what we're going to create but i'm going to show creating one this is for our, my real accounts i already have one but i'll create a new one just to show you how to do this process uh, so I don't have to delete my old one or do anything like that because I don't want to mess with my account. So we'll just click create token. And of course, the first option is actually edit zone DNS. This is probably one of the most commonly used um, API tokens. That's probably why they put it first because for you know, dynamic DNS updates can use it as well as creating certificates. So I actually use it for both purposes. I use it for dynamic DNS as well. So if you click on use template, you'll see that you have zone DNS by default and edit is already you know, the default options are pretty great. You'll notice if I go down here and just click continue to summary, it actually wants you to pick a specific zone. I don't know if that's because I have multiple domain names it asks me to pick, or if even if you have one domain name, it might ask you to pick. But if you want, you can just say all zones, or you can say a specific zone, which would be a specific domain name. I'm just gonna say all zones because you can use the same token for all of your uh, domain names. If you wanna create one token for each domain name to, to make it, you know, give out less permissions, you can do that. But it's easier just to say all zones and then uh, if, if you don't make sure you don't put a date in there so this token won't expire so you don't have to worry about renewing this token because your renewals will fail eventually once this token expires so if you just click uh, continue to summary and then you just click create token and you'll see here there is an api key that is generated and you can copy and paste this i won't blur this out because i'm this is not going to be a token i'm going to be using so i don't care if you see this token i'm not going to copy and paste this token into my example because i want to use a real um you know api token that i already have created so I, when i copy and paste it I'll, I'll blur that out but here you'll see that there's a token here you want to copy this token and make sure you save it so when you go to view all api tokens you'll see i have a new token in here um below my other token so i have to make sure i delete the right one when, when i'm done with this you know tutorial here so as you can see it's very easy to create a token and now we just need, we're going to go back to OpenSense and we're going to be using that token when we create the acme client as you can see on my dashboard, this is the name of my system. I just made up a fake name for this demo called router test, router hyphen test at homenetworkout.com. Keep note of this name. You need to make sure this is your real domain name, which this is my real domain name that I own. And you wanna make a host name for it. And that is under the system settings uh, general page and you can put it here, router test, home network guy.com. You wanna make sure, you gotta make sure this matches what you put on your certificate or the validation for your certificate will not match and it probably won't, won't end up being a valid certificate. So that's part of the process where you need to make sure, you, cause this becomes part of your common name on your certificate. So you wanna make sure that matches. So that, now let's go to, so we're gonna to go to firmware, 
plugins and we wait for the plugin list to load. If it has to refresh, it takes a second. Um, so it's actually the first option here, the Acme client. So you can just click install. Okay, now it's done. So now what we need to do is we'll go down to services. I'm just gonna click on a random page here because the, you know, so I don't have to refresh the page. Um, you'll see Acme client appears. As you can see on the settings page, this plugin is uh, not enabled by default. We'll do this, we'll come back to this, but I just want you to see this page. The auto renewal is checked by default. These are your default settings right here. So we're gonna go to accounts. We're gonna set up everything first and then we'll enable once we're done to make sure we have everything set up properly. So we're gonna go to accounts. We're gonna click uh, add a new name and I'm just gonna make up my name here, All right? You can just use whatever name you want. Make sure you use a valid email address. Uh, This will be the account that you use for um, your Let's Encrypt uh, certificates. They will email you whenever your certificate is about to expire, so you'll know. And you just click Save. That's all you really need to add on that page. And then we can go to Challenge Types. We're just kind of going down through these menu options here to just configure everything because there's a couple different steps. So Challenge Type is all defaults to DNS, which is what we want, which is great. We'll just say DNS Challenge is the name. This name is not very important. Uh, whatever you can call it, whatever you want, basically. It's just, so if you click on the DNS service box, you can actually see Cloudflare when you scroll up. After selecting Cloudflare as a DNS service, you'll see it opened up the uh, Cloudflare options down here. You can enter your global API key, but I don't recommend doing that because that's less secure than actually using the token we just created because it has more restrictive permissions. So uh, ideally, you would just want to fill this section in down below. The, these are your Cloudflare account ID and your API token and your zone ID. The zone ID is optional technically, probably if you only have one domain name you're managing per, per key or you only own one domain name, you might not really need that zone ID. But since I said all zones, I'm going to put the zone ID in there so it knows which domain name I'm going to actually be modifying. So I'm going to put that information in here and I'll blur it out because this is the most sensitive part of the installation. If you're not sure where your Cloudflare account ID and your zone ID are located, if you go to your domain name on Cloudflare and you scroll to the right hand corner of the overview page, you'll see the zone ID and the account ID there. And then you just paste your key that you copied earlier. And remember, you only get to copy that once. So I, never, I forgot to mention that before, but you only get to copy it once. So if you forgot what it was, delete it and recreate it <laughs> so you can get your token. Okay, now that we have this information entered, we can click save. As you can see, the account challenge type is saved. Now we're down to the last two options, which are certificates and automations. I recommend creating an automation real quick before you create a certificate, because that way you can just go ahead and select the automation right after you, or as you're creating the certificate. So let's go to automations first, and I'll show you why we're gonna do this one first. We're gonna click add on automations, and we're gonna say restart OpenSense Web UI. It's actually the first thing um, there. So we could just give it a name, let's call it restart. Um, OpenSense Web UI, we can call it the same thing. Okay, doesn't really matter what we call it. We're just gonna click save and it's enabled by default. Okay, and now we're gonna to go to our certificates and then we're gonna click on the plus button and then we're gonna say the common name. This is the name of your router that you have that I showed you earlier. And mine is called routertest.homenetworkguide.com. You gotta make sure this matches because this is your common name. It matches your, matches your certificate. And then we already have our Acme account in here and challenge type in here is already by default because it just if there's only one of each type there, it just picks it by default. You can leave the auto renewal on and the renewal interval the same. It means it's going to renew every 60 days. Okay, the only other thing left to configure is this automations. This is the automation we just created. So click on restart OpenSense Web UI. The reason I had you create an automation so you can just pick it here and you don't have to come back to it to edit this. And this uh, automation is helpful because whenever you get a new certificate renewal, it'll refresh the web interface just to make sure that new certificate gets applied. So the next time you log in, after the certificate gets renewed, it makes sure the web interface is actually um, using that new certificate. And we just click save. All right, at this point, we have all the information we need to issue a certificate. You can either click on this uh, button here that says issue or renew certificate. If you just want to pick out that one, if you have multiple certificates, but it's, you know, or you can click this button that says issue, renew all certificates. You may not want to do this if you have multiple certificates, um, but since we only have one certificate, it doesn't hurt to click this button here. 
After refreshing the browser after a minute or so, you will see that you should have a last Acme status is okay. Otherwise, you'll get some other error message here if it didn't work. And then you'll, you'll see the renewal date and last run. So since we got a renewal date and time here, we actually got a valid certificate. When I actually copy and pasted this in my example, because I'm using it through a uh, tiny pilot, I'm not sure if I copy pasted the right thing out of my password manager. So it actually said uh, validation failed here. So I went and fixed that real quick and, and redid it. If you see validation failed, that probably means there's something wrong with the API key or your something is a typo or something somewhere because this should still work. The nice thing about doing these certificates I, I didn't mention earlier is you don't actually have to create a DNS entry for home network got com for router dash test if you yeah you know, i don't actually have a dns entry for that you only need a dns entry for router test if you want an external access for, to your network to that to that host name so since i don't need that you can actually create certificates on any host name in on any device in your internal network using a real domain name now that we created this certificate we know that it works we can go to the settings page and click on enable plugin and click apply this will cause it your certificate to auto renew every uh, 60 days or whatever so you want to make sure you click this and enable it once you got everything working if you want to change the time when your certificates updated click on update schedule and by default it's set to midnight you can change the minutes or hours or if, if you're familiar with cron jobs you can just change the different um, timings on when this actually occurs so it can be in the middle of the night when you're not awake and then your certificates always stay renewed if you hit cancel or save it takes you back to here now that we've created a certificate and have an auto renewing, let's go to the system trust certificates page so that you can see that our new certificate that we generated is right here. And one last thing we need to do is actually go to the settings administration page. And you'll see that this is the default certificate right here under the SSL certificate. The default certificate is web GUI TLS certificate. That's the self signed one that OpenSense creates when you install it. So what we need to do now is actually select the one that we've generated with our Acme client. As you can see, we have the router test uh, certificate. So we just select that and we'll just click save down here at the bottom. So now it's reloading the web GUI. You might have to refresh the page if it doesn't refresh automatically. As you can see, I'm using the IP address to access my OpenSense box, and you'll see I'm still getting a warning here, but notice the warning down here, instead of being self-signed certificate, it actually says that the certificate's only valid for routertest.homenetworkguy.com. So what we need to do now that we've got a new certificate is actually just use the domain name. So we'll just do routertest.homenetworkguy.com. As you can see, when we use the host name and domain name, we don't get any warnings and it shows that we're secure, that the site is, the connection is secure and it's a valid Let's Encrypt certificate. So that's what we want. And then that gets rid of your warnings for OpenSense. I hope you found this guide helpful on how to get rid of the warning message when you try to access your router. So until next time, I'll see you later. do is we hit refresh and it says validation failed validation failed